Houston heard the Bible guy. Bible guy. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Sorry, I was too busy cheating on my re- I, I mean, completing my journals on time and being a responsible Bible student. Now, as you can tell, I'm Houston Heard the Bible Guy. And uh, today I'm here to talk to you about Joseph and his brothers. You see, it's an interesting story because nowadays nobody really thinks about selling their siblings into slavery. So, do you have any siblings? I do. You know, what brothers, sisters, what do you got going on? I have two brothers. Two brothers, interesting. So let's say you're like positive that your parents love your brothers more than they love you. And your brothers have a really sweet coat. Would you like throw your brother into a well? Maybe sell him into slavery? Like what would you do? Probably both. Both? So, quick question. Do you have any siblings? One brother. One brother? Alright. So let's say your brother has this really cool coat that you want. Would you sell your brother into slavery? No. You wouldn't? Do you have any siblings? Yes. What do you have? Brother, sister? I have an older brother. An older brother? Alright. So let's say your brother had something that you really wanted. Yeah. Would you sell him into slavery? Sell him into slavery? Sell him into slavery. Just to get the thing? Just to get the thing. I would just take it from him. I wouldn't Interesting thought process. Him. I wouldn't sell him into slavery. Now why wouldn't you do that? It seems like a pretty logical thing to do. Sell him because slavery is not good. I mean, I would want to get paid for something if I had to do work for it. But, I mean, you're getting paid to sell your brother into slavery. Yeah, but he doesn't get paid for the work. I like my brother. Okay, I don't like my brother that much, but I like him more. I like him enough to not sell him into slavery. Good choice. Thank you for your time. So let's say that brothers or sisters have something that you really want. And you're like really sure that your parents love them more than they love you. Like, how tempted would you be to sell your siblings into slavery? No, I don't think I'd be down. Now, explain to me like what you're thinking. Like, why are you why are you making this decision? I like my sister. I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> but like you're positive, like your parents really love her more than they love you. And like your parents gave her this really cool coat. Like, not even if you wanted the coat, you wouldn't even think about selling her. Like, what about throwing her into a well? That seems like a little bit more rational. <laughs> So, you don't think no, so? I don't think no. Alright, that's a respectable decision. So let's say your brother or your sister has something you really want. And you're like positive that your family loves them more than they love you. Oh god. Would you be willing to sell one of your siblings, if not both, into slavery? Yes. <laughs> no. Um, like I'll take one a price, I'll take like a thought process, anything. I'm, th I'm thinking in it through. My sister, I tell my sister. <laughs> tell your sister. <laughs> Now, what makes you like jump to that? It's a pretty rash decision. No, it is. It is. But, <laughs> but um, you know, like if it was a car, if I needed to survive, like I have to do it. You gotta do what you gotta do. It's a wild out there. You gotta cutthroat industry. I totally like cutthroat, as in like it's it's yeah, like life or death. Center. So, when in doubt, sell your sister into slavery. I'm saying it's a, it's a logical option. Morally, no. Logical, yes. <laughs> Alright, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. <laughs> so let's say your sister has something that you really want. And you're like positive that your parents love your sister more than they love you. Would you be willing to sell your sister into slavery? You wouldn't explain to me your thought process. It's me. It's me. Yeah, it does seem kind of mean. What about, what about throwing her into a well? Is that like a little bit different? Yeah, that's, that's still bad. Still bad? You wouldn't do that? So let's say you're positive that your sister is loved more by your parents than you. That is true. Would you be willing to sell your sister into slavery? You know what? I feel like she has more potential than me as a human, and just so probably not. Okay, what about throwing her into a well? Would you be willing to do that? I mean, once again, well, she would have more potential than me. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> 
physics jokes there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would not. <laughs> you wouldn't? Alright, so let's say that we'll take your twin sister. She has something that you really want, and you're positive that your parents love her more than they love you. Would you be willing to sell her in the slave? This is for Bible class. <laughs> I'm doing this one too. <laughs> I would never train my sister. What about throwing her into a well? Would you be willing to do that? <laughs> not even just like a little bit, not even toe in the line. No, I wouldn't. Alright, so let's say that your brother or your sister has something you really want. Alright? And you're positive that your parents love your brother or sister more than they love you. Would you be willing to sell them into slavery? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. No! Yes! Um, <laughs> Not even for like a good, a good stack yeah, of cash? No. no! So let's say you're like positive that your parents love your brother more than they love you. Alright, and I'm sure in some hypothetical world because we all know that's not true. So, would you be willing to sell your brother into slavery? No. Like, you're sure of it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What about throwing into a well? How no. Do you feel about that? No. Not even for like a. Pro no, probably no. Probably no? I mean, he's like my brother, so you know, he's like, kind of like him. Like. You know, that's not how Joseph's brothers felt the Bible. Yeah. Now, do you have any siblings? One sister. Okay, uh, would you be willing to sell her into slavery? How much are we talking here? Hmm, it's interesting. So, if I were to offer you a good amount, but your sibling had like this really cool coat, right? That you wanted. Yeah. But you know, after you sell her into slavery- Do I get the coat? You destroy the coat, which is like an interesting decision. No. Good choice. Now, as you can tell, people today think that selling a sibling into slavery is an extremely drastic measure. But that's not how it was for Joseph's family, and that's where we dive into the story. You see, this man named Jacob loved his wife very much, so he had 12 sons. I'm talking John and Kate plus eight plus four. And then Joseph was his absolute favorite son. Let's take a look. When the world was young and full of miracle and wonder, there lived an old shepherd named Jacob who had many sons. The latest addition to the family was Benjamin. There, there, Benjamin. You grow up to be a good boy, hmm? Big and strong. And with any luck, you'll take after your brother Joseph. You see that, Benjamin? Your brother Joseph's always reading, always thinking. I wonder what's taking my other son so long to gather the wheat, Joseph. Did you say something, Father? Would you go and make sure your brothers are seeing to their work? Yes, Father, right away. Joseph. We were just having a bit of fun. <sighs> Come on. We've got to get this done. We? We break our backs in the fields all day under the hot sun. All you ever do is boss us around. Joseph's too smart to work in the fields. He can read and write. It's not my fault father taught me to read and write. Admit it. You think you're better than us. No, I don't. I never asked to be put in charge. Then lend us a hand. Here. 
<laughs> you wouldn't laugh so hard if you knew what I dreamt last night. Oh? Now, Joseph was, as they say, a dreamy kid. He had all these weird dreams, he interpreted them, but we won't get into that right now. Joseph's father, Jacob, made him the dopest of the coats. Now, when I say dope, Imagine the dopest coat you've ever seen, and take that dopeness factor, multiply it by 50, and that's how dope this coat was. Now, Joseph's brothers got a little peanut butter and jelly about that, so they decided to uh, take the matters into their own hands. Tell us, Joseph, what did you dream? We were in the fields, making sheaves of wheat. Sudden, my sheep leapt out of my hands and stood straight up. Then your bundles formed a circle around mine. And bowed down to my bundle. Our bundles bow to yours. What do you think the dream means? I'll tell you what it means. I think Joseph expects us to bow down to him. That's the no, I don't. Thing I ever heard. He does think he's better than us. Maybe we need to teach Joseph a little lesson. Joseph! Joseph, wake up! Uh, uh, yes, Father? Look what I've made for you! This is for me? A present for my favorite son. But, Father, it's more fitting that you wear such a handsome coat. I made it for you, Joseph. Wear it with pride. Oh, when my brothers see me wearing this... They'll understand. You go ahead, try it on. It makes you look like a prince. So, uh... The brothers decided it would be a good idea to throw Joseph down a well, which is not good. <laughs> Grammar jokes. Now, after that, they pull Joseph up and he gets really excited. He's like, Ayo, my brothers are coming back. But he gets up there only to find that they're selling him into slavery. And then after that all happens, the brothers go home with a pocket full of moolah and say, I'm sorry, Jacob, AKA father, because that's probably what they called him, but Joseph's dead. Look who's coming. It's the dreamer. Look at what he's wearing. That <laughs> coat? I've never seen anything like it. We wear rags and he dresses like a prince. This is the last straw. Let's teach him a lesson. We should get rid of him. That'd solve our problems. I've got an idea. Let's take the coat. Yeah, tear it off him. That'll teach him to keep quiet. Hello, brothers. Hey! Hey, let go of me! You're wearing that coat to mock us, aren't you? No! Where'd you get it? Father made it for me. Let me up! Let's take it from him. Let, let go of my... Uh, what are you... Stop it! Please! You're hurting me! What are you doing? Get him up. This is payback for turning father against us. <laughs> Let's put him in that well. No! No, please! No! One! Put him in! Ah! Keep 
keep an eye on him until I get back. Hey! Let me out! Please! I bet the Ishmaelite traders will give us 20 pieces of silver for him. You mean sell him? 20 pieces is a lot of money. But didn't Reuben say... Reuben's not here. So after the whole sold into slavery, death hoax thing happens, Joseph goes to prison. And believe me, I play in Monopoly, I know it's not a good thing. But when he's in prison, he's in the dungeon of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, kind of big deal, am I right? And the Pharaoh hears that Joseph's good at interpreting dreams. And Pharaoh's like, hey, yo, Joseph, my homie, I've been having nightmares, I've been having daydreams, what's up with that? And Joseph tells him of this famine. We'll get to that in a second. And then after the famine becomes true, Joseph becomes important now. Now, Joseph went from slave now, to jail now, to important now. And the important now is the now now. So during this famine, Joseph's family comes back, and we'll see from there. Hello, children. Nice to see you again. Hi, Holy. We are ready to hear a nice story from the Bible again. Can you tell us one? Okay. This is a happy story of Joseph who sees his family again after a long time. A young man, Joseph, had been sold off as a slave by his brothers. He ended up in Egypt in prison. Now Joseph had helped the king of Egypt understand a dream he had had. Because of this, Joseph was made a very important man in Egypt. The king had dreamt that there would be seven years of good harvest, followed by seven years of no rain at all. And like in his dream, the following seven years saw a good harvest and there was a lot of food. Joseph was put in charge of properly storing all the extra food in every region of Egypt. The following seven years saw no harvest at all. While the regions around Egypt had problems, Egypt had enough food. Soon people started moving to Egypt to buy food. Among these people were Joseph's brothers. When Joseph saw them, he recognized them immediately, but they could not. Joseph accused them of being spies. They said they were not, but Joseph refused to believe them till they got their youngest brother Benjamin as proof. Joseph said that because he really wanted to see his brother Benjamin again. His brothers soon came back to Egypt with Benjamin. As they were leaving the palace, Joseph slipped a silver goblet into Benjamin's bag. He told the palace guards to arrest his brother and charged him with stealing from the palace. Joseph ordered, This thief will stay in Egypt as a slave. The other brothers pleaded, No, please don't do that. Our father will be heartbroken. Please take one of us instead. On hearing his father's name, Joseph was sad. He could not pretend any longer. He told his brothers who he really was and asked them to bring Jacob to meet him as soon as possible. So Jacob and the whole family came to Egypt. So as you can tell, they were reunited and it feels so good. Not just good, so good. How good? So good. So the moral of the story here, Houston heard the Bible guy, you know about the Bible, what is it? I'll tell you, citizen. If we follow God's plan, no matter how different it is from ours, no matter how bad it seems at the time, we will always get to the promised land. Houston heard the Bible guy. Houston heard the Bible guy. God, God.
Stay tuned next time, the New Testament Project, when we tackle the crucifixion of Jesus.